Hello friends, how are you? Today we will see about the OSHA safety regulations and the topics are column splice strength, column splice locations, perimeter safety cable attachments, joist stabilizer plates at column and joist. So let's watch today's video. Column splice strength. Column splices have the same 300 LB loading requirement at the top of the upper shaft as required for anchor rods. Like this, 300 pounds. Again, the erector must consider other factors such as wind and the guy the column accordingly if necessary. Column splice locations. Since connectors are required to tie off when the fall distance exceeds 30 feet, placing column splices every three floors is an inefficient choice for the purpose of erection. The erector will erect two floors, deck the second level, and then erect and deck the third level before starting the process again. It would be better for the project structural engineer of record to place column splices either every two floors or in some cases every four floors so as to optimize the erection process. Column splice height at perimeter columns or perimeter safety cable attachments. Except where <clears throat> constructability does not permit, perimeter columns must extend a minimum of 48 inches above the finish floor to allow the attachment of safety cables. Perimeter safety cables are required at the final interior and exterior perimeters for the purpose of protecting the erector from fall from decked areas. The columns must be provided to the erector with either holes or attachments to support the top and middle lines of the safety cables at 48 inch and 21 inch above the finish floor. This is not required at the openings such as stairways, elevator shafts, etc. It is based left to the fabricator to determine the most economical way to support the safety cables. Perimeter safety cables must meet the requirements for guardrail systems in 1926.502 Appendix G. This is the fall protection arrangement. Joist stabilizer plates at columns. When the columns are strutted with joist, the column must be provided with a plate to receive and stabilize the joist bottom cord. The plate must be a minimum of 6 inch by 6 inch and extended 3 inch below the joist bottom cord with a 13 by 16 inch diameter hole for attaching guying or plumbing cables. Figures 2.18 and 2-19 shows details at column tops in cantilevered girder construction. In figure 2.18 shows these stiffeners in the beam wave above the column. In this case, the stiffeners acting with a properly designed column cap will provide the necessary continuity and stability for the column top. Thus, the joist bottom cord extensions need not be welded to the stabilizer plates. In figure 2.19, there is no stiffener over the column and stability of the column top is provided by welding the extended bottom cords to the stabilizer plates. 
these welded connections create continuity in the joist. The resulting moments must be reported to the joist supplier so that joist can be properly designed. The timing of the welding must be indicated so that it is consistent with the continuity moments reported. For example, the effects of the loads applied prior to the welding need not be included in the continuity moments. Joist A joist is a horizontal structural member used in framing to span an open space often between beams that subsequently transfer load to the vertical members. When incorporated into a floor framing system, joists serve to provide stiffness to the subfloor sheathing, allowing it to function as a horizontal diaphragm. Joists are often doubled or tripled, placed side by side where conditions warrant such as where wall partitions required. So in this figure, these are, this is the frame of the garage and these green color are joist. Here, this is the ceiling joist. Joist. Regulations regarding joist of interest to the structural steel detailer are strut joist at or near columns must be filled bolted. Unless panelized, joist of 40 feet or greater span must be filled bolted to their supports unless constructability does not allow. Steel detailer must take the bolting requirements for joist of 40 feet spans and over into consideration into beam details, particularly in cantilever construction over the cantilever support. Note that strut joists require bolting and stabilizer plates regardless of span. K series joist commonly use one half inch diameter bolts, while LH series and DLH series joist use three by four inch diameter bolts. Systems engineered metal buildings. Fabricators must not arbitrarily increase bolt diameters without verifying with the project structural engineer of record that the additional loss of net cross-sectional area from the beam flange will not affect the supporting member's design. Threaded studs may not be used on walking or working surfaces because they constitute a tripping hazard. All requirements of subpart R apply to systems engineered metal buildings except as noted in that section. Additionally, there are some safety requirements that are unique to this type of construction. Summary We have seen tripping hazards, roof and floor holes and openings, column anchor rods, minimum erection bolts, double connections, column splice strength, column splice locations, perimeter safety cable attachments, joist stabilizer plates at column and joist. For the content in the video, all credits are given to the AISC committee who prepared the manual detailing for steel construction. I am grateful to them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to you all for being with me throughout this video. I am grateful for your support. We will meet in the next video. Bye bye. If you find this video useful, then please share. It will help others. And subscribe to get notified about the new videos. For more information, 
you can visit www.osha.gov